Hello everyone, welcome to my lecture on amplitude modulation. This is my first video of my channel, eSpace. Welcome everyone. I am Chandra Chandran, I am a graduate from IC Bangalore. Now working as senior engineer at Calpron Trivandrum. In this lecture, we will be talking about introduction to communication and need of modulation, amplitude modulation, types of AM and SD modulation, TV signals and receivers. So about the lecture, it's a theoretical course. BTEC level course, usually it will be in the fourth semester, fifth semester of the BTEC course under analog communication. A reference I have taken is Communication System 4th edition Hakin. And as a prerequisite, you should have knowledge about engineer mathematics, single cell systems, single systems means Fourier transform, Fourier series, convolution, etc. So, what is communication? Communication is information transfer between two entities. Can be the entities can be two between two persons, two animals, two computers, or to any any two entities. It can be human, animal, computer, anything for any X. And these two entities can be called as one as transmitter and receiver. A transmitter is the entity which transmits the message. Transmits the message from one place and the receiver receives it from the other end and these two transmitter and receiver can be close can be wired or wireless analog or digital anything here we will see in the communication between two electronic entities okay so the path in which information transfer is called the channel and in the channel there will be some noise which, which degrades the message transmitted from one transmitter to receiver and time for type of information depends. It can be speech, anything, anything, speech, music, anything, any type of information. And here, here we'll be dealing with electronic communication. The information will be electronic, and communication will be done through electronic signals. And can be analog or digital, wired or wireless. And let let us uh, look back in the olden days where the communication by talking and sending through carriers from BC on. So, if in the olden days, if you want to communicate from one person to another, a, a, a person can travel from one place to another carrying the message. Suppose it can be some person, sometimes animal or bird. So, here is just shown a bird carrying a, carrying a letter. Here, letter is a message. And the, this bird acts as a carrier the pigeon that act as a carrier which carries a message and it includes, so it includes a carrier a traveling path and then traveling path is called the channel in the channel it can have noise suppose dust or any weather changes like that which degrades the information of the this letter the letter can, can, dirt, get, can get dirty it can get uh, wet due to some rain so that is so in the in the example that the rain can be called as a noise which degrades the information so now let us have a look at uh, have a look at on, have a look on history of electronic communication and here it means communication through electronic signals and from the invention of telegraphs the com electronic communication started it was in 1793 and telegraph it has wired Morse code telephone wireless telegraphy then radio it became this this is this is example of a radio the communication done through RF waves and that is wireless and then and next uh, satellite communication came where the uh, antenna transmits to the satellite and the satellite then broadcasts it to the many base stations in the earth okay and then uh, finally it is of fiber optic so in, after that has started communication, internet came, cellular phone came, and the, the technology becomes very complex. And earlier it was analog, and where, for the case of telephone, now it is digital, where we can encrypt and decrypt data. We can uh, we can have we can have some code on the data. Example that is all very advanced topics. But in this lecture, we will be ha handling that wireless communication, that is amplitude modulation where the anti radio and tv signals are transmitted and simple modulation of the communication system so these are the two entities uh, as we had discussed earlier transmitter and receiver and through and channel through which the information 
transfer take place and this is a noise which decreases the information receiving at the receiver end. So need of a carrier. So consider so why we are a carrier. Suppose we are transmitting audio signal. The, the, maximum, the maximum frequency is 20 kilohertz and the minimum frequency is 20 hertz. So if we have to transmit audio through an antenna, we, are, we have the equation here lambda is equal to c by f and height of the antenna is h. Uh, uh, the lambda we can take it as h and c is the wave velocity that's the 3 into 10 raised to 8 that's the ultra magnetic wave, uh, free, uh, wave, wave velocity. So if we, if we calculate for a 20 kilohertz the height is 15 kilometer <laughs> that is very unacceptable length. So that shows the need of a carrier signal in addition to the message to transfer where the carrier signal will be of high frequency and with with, the, with more power. So consider the example of a pigeon sending the message that the earlier that bird. So the analogy is that the carrier signal high frequency act as the, that bird or the pigeon and our audio signal act as a letter. Now the carrier frequency is 100, so we take 137 megahertz and the antenna length is now 2 meter which is acceptable. So we should have a for this, indi this indicates that we should have a carrier of high frequency and that high frequency will be carrying the message of low, low frequency message from one place to another. So the carrier is used by changing any of its characteristics according to the message name by the technique called modulation. So we are, we are adding another, uh, another signal called carrier signal that which, which, which is of high frequency and by a technique of modulation by a technique called modulation, we are sending it, it from one place to another by carrying the that low frequency signal. So why the need of modulation? Yeah, the practical length of antenna we have already discussed. A narrow banding of signal. If you transmit baseband signal, for example, audio, the the, the ratio becomes yeah, ratio is very high. 20 k by 20 is thousand. If you transmit it at modulation signal, that is one megahertz plus the high, high frequency is 1 megahertz plus 20k divided by 1 megahertz plus 20 the transfer the band becomes 1.0 so the ratio is very less and then frequency the, when the next advantage is frequency multiplexing suppose we are having two stations of different frequency one is 100 megahertz one is 200 megahertz we, this these two based these two uh, radio station can carry the same audio signal that is it, ranging from 20 to 20 kilohertz from one place to another uh, occurring in two different places. So we can send the same audio signal by the two stations at different frequencies. That is, a, that is called the frequency multiplexing and then the effective power radiated by antenna. And p here p is daily proportional, inversely proportional to lambda square, lambda square is the wavelength. If we have higher frequency, this wavelength becomes less. So the power, effective power radiated by the antenna becomes more. So we have a much more efficient power transmission when we have a modulation. So the idea of modulation. So the idea of modulation as discussed earlier, any of the characteristics of the carrier signal is changed according to the message or baseband signal. So according, so some suppose suppose, suppose amplitude of the hmm, carrier signal is changed according to the baseband signal and and just answer like that. Now the choice of carrier signal can, can it be DC, sine wave, square, triangle or so too? It should be sine wave. So mathematically a monotone signal at the fi fixed frequency is sine wave. Suppose we have the x-axis, the frequency x-axis at a fixed frequency, suppose 100 kilohertz. That is a sine wave in the, mathematically it's a sine wave at the as a fixed frequency. So we will, we will be handling sine wave and to represent as the equation, we will we'll be taking cosine wave as because, because of its phase. So the idea of modulation here, so we'll take the carrier signal C of T as AC cos theta. So that's a, the equation of a sine wave where amplitude is AC cos theta. Theta will represent as omega T, this is angular frequency, omega is angular frequency. And omega again, we can Define it as 2 pi FCT, where FC is the frequency of the sine wave plus phi. So it is this phi x as a phase, AC as amplitude, FC as frequency. So there are three parameters 
these three parameters we can change according to the message signal that is message which is a low frequency signal and then transmits to from one one place to another through a channel so there are three forms of modulation one is amplitude modulation frequency modulation and then phase modulation so the frequency and phase modulation combinedly called amplitude modulation but we'll be focusing on amplitude and frequency modulation not phase modulation and in this lecture we'll be focusing on amplitude modulation so this is a picture of modulator and demodulator where baseband signal we'll call the message signal of low frequency as baseband signal that's the base is to indicate low frequency so we'll be calling the message signal as baseband signal modulator modulated wave and the modulator in the modulator baseband signal is modulated according to the carrier wave and then it transmits to the channel and at the channel output at the receiver end the demodulator that's the demodulator in the receiving end demodulates the modulated wave to an estimate of a message signal. here we are reproducing the message signal. that's why it is called a estimate of message signal. and there will be some difference between base baseband signal transmit at the tra transmitting end and then a um, message signal receiving at the receiving end there is little difference because we are reporting because of the noise it can be degraded and some there will be some but the information is same but there will be some it is not exact re replica so modulation this is a carrier wave this is a baseband signal and here in the amplitude modulation you can see the amplitude of the carrier wave is changed according to the baseband signal where the amplitude is high the amplitude of the carrier wave is high where amplitude is low the amplitude of the carrier wave is low so that's a amplitude modulation and the frequency modulation the frequency becomes higher when the baseband signal the amplitude of the baseband signal is high and when the amplitude of the baseband signal becomes low the frequency become of the carrier becomes low that is a frequency modulation so let us focus on amplitude modulation so consider consider the baseband signal to the m to be m of t so let us indicate and let us represent this m of t whose bandwidth limits from 0 hertz to w hertz and carrier weight to be c of t that is ac cos 2 pi of c that's a monotone signal it's a, it's a single frequency signal this m of t it has a bandwidth limiting from 0 hertz to w hertz that's from dc to some w hertz that it, and, and that is a low pass signal because it's a low frequency low pass it is a low frequency signal so then the equation of am wave is s of t so then the equation of am wave is s of t is equal to ac into 1 plus k m of t into cos 2 pi f this is a equation of the modulated wave as a m mod a modulated wave in the time domain where k is called the amplitude sensitivity so if the conditions are there the amplitude of k m of t should be less than 1 for all t where k m of t is greater than 1 the carrier wave becomes over modulated resulting in phase reversals that by just having just drawing we can understand that if k m of t is greater than 1 then phase reversals happen see here it is very acceptable uh, amplitude when this becomes more here so it then phase reversal happens here that is shown here it phase reversal happens so and um, by when demodulating the we cannot recover the message signal that that's why they should not have this phase reversal should not happen and this is the ideal case of a amplitude uh, demodulation at the uh, transmitting end so in free, so uh, in the in the communication system or signal processing uh, signal processing uh, techniques uh, to get a bet, better picture of the signal we will be uh, seeing it in the frequency domain so if we if we get the uh, uh, get a picture uh, if we get the uh, representation in the frequency domain we will have a, get a better picture of the signal we can have how we can calculate the power everything everything we can calculate so uh, so in this aim the, the earlier equation ac into 1 plus k m of t into cos 2 pi c t ST is the time domain representation of the AM wave. Suppose we want to see in the frequency domain, we'll be, we should find the 
Fourier representation of the S of T, that is S of F, if we want to find out. So, how we can find it by applying Fourier transform on to these two to these two terms, that is A C cos 2. If we uh, extend it, we can get A C cos 2 pi of C T plus A C K M of T into cos 2 pi of C T. These two terms we can get. So, now let us see. Let us first take first term cos 2 pi of ct that is we can uh, we can uh, extend with uh, Euler's formula e raised to j 2 pi of ct plus e raised to minus j 2 pi of ct by 2 so this equation and then Fourier transform of these two terms so we have Fourier transform e, the e raised to the Fourier transform of e raised to j 2 pi of ct is del f minus fc that is the impulse fun this impulse function shifted to frequency fc from zero that is that is this as a for a transform of this thing so we will have cos 2 pi of ct that is half into del of f minus fc plus del of f plus fc one shifted to positive frequency and then another shifted to negative fc so let us now uh, find out the Fourier transform of second term that is ACK m of t into cos 2 pi FCT. That is ACK Fourier transform m of t into cos. So we have here from Fourier transform property multiplication of two functions in the time domain is the convolution of its Fourier transform at the frequency domain. So we will take m the Fourier transform m of t as m of f and from equation 4 we have that is ACK m of f into half del of f minus fc plus del of f, sorry, f plus ft fc so this is convolution over this thing and we, if we enlarge this enlarge this we will get like this m of f into del of f minus fc m of f into del of f plus fc so from convolution property we have f of t into del of t minus t zero here f is uh, t is f and t zero is fc so from convolution property we have this thing yeah, that is the convolution of these two quantities is f of t minus t0 so we will have here it as m of f minus fc and m of capital m that is capital m of f, f minus fc and capital m of f plus fc so we will get here like this that is for the terms of this term is this term becomes a c k m of f minus fc plus f m of f plus fc so equation 3 becomes by adding both terms by linearity equation 4 and equation 7 we will get like this then this is the final frequency domain representation of the am wave so here we will see the two impulse functions that is the two that is the carrier frequency the carrier frequency and then the shifted version of message signal that is the message signal gets shifted that is by modulation it gets shifted and this property is also called as frequency translation where the message signal gets shifted to shifted to the carrier frequency carrier, carrier frequency in negative and uh, positive positive frequency suppose at the band suppose at the baseband signal limited to w uh, minus w to w then and and if w is very less than fc then we refer to as refer to the message signal narrow band signal okay so so this is the spectrum of the this is the spectrum of the baseband signal so we can, here we can see there is a low frequency 0 to it extends from 0 to w 0 to minus w negative frequency so when we have the am wave so this is the picture in the am wave and this is the picture of the am wave in the high frequency this is the carrier signal with very high frequency and this band we, we call as upper side band and this band we call as lower side. This is the same band here. This is the same band here. You see, this gets shifted to FC. It was, it was here. The lower side band was here. It gets shifted to like this and these two, these two shapes are symmetric to each other. And this is the mm, this is the amplitude here, AC by two, and amplitude of the uh, modulated wave is half k x AC k AC. 
So this is called also called as frequency translation where where the message signal gets shifted because of shift because of because of that shifting it is called frequency translation. And so as a result of modulation process, the spectrum of the message signal M of T for negative frequency become completely visible for positive frequency. So the it, the lower side band that is a negative frequency it becomes visible in the positive frequency. So for for positive frequency, the post of for the portion of spectrum lying below FC is called upper side band, and those below FC is called lower side band. And the transmission bandwidth you can see F when we when we see the the picture, the transmission bandwidth is 2 W. So that's a it's a, it's exactly twice the message bandwidth. So we have a actually a waste of bandwidth, waste of some frequent bandwidth here. And uh, um, coming slides, we can see how to tackle that. So let us study now. We'll study, let us study some uh, a, a technique called Hilbert transform. Mm, that is, it's a signal processing technique. First, we will study that in, in order to understand modulation deep in deep, in deep mathematically. For and for example. Let G of T and G of F be a Fourier transform pairs and G of T and G cap of T be Hilbert transform pairs where G cap of gap of T is defined as G cap of T is equal to 1 by pi into integral minus infinity of infinity G of tau by T minus tau into D tau. So this is this we can represent that g cap of t as g of t convolution over 1 by pi of t and we have Fourier transform pair 1 by of t as minus j this, is, this function is called signum function or sine function that is 1 by of t we have Fourier transform, Fourier transform 1 minus j into signum of f where signum of f is at frequency f, f is equal to 0 it is 0 f greater than 0 it is 1 f less than 0 it is minus 1. So g cap of f becomes minus a signum f into signum of f into g of f that's okay. that combination of 1 by pi t and g of t becomes like this. So that is minus j minus j into 1 into g of f for f greater than 0 and j into 1 into g of f f less than 0. Here we can see that the amplitude, the mode, the mode that the absolute value of this g of f is 1 and the, the, the angle, the argument becomes 90 degree to minus 90 degree. So it will have shown the characteristics of linear two port device for obtaining the Hilbert trans Hilbert transform of real values. So, so the, abs the ab uh, absolute absolute value is one throughout the f uh, frequency throughout the frequency spectrum, and it becomes plus 90 at the negative frequency and minus 90 for positive frequency. So, let us define pre envelope of the signal. Pre envelope is defined as g, g plus of t is equal to g g of t plus j into Hilbert transform of g of that is a g cap of t is a Hilbert transform of g of t so in the frequency domain becomes g of f plus j into minus j signum of f into g of f so after comparing it we can write like this g of f plus signum of f into g of f uh, it's a picture of this a g of f is like this sigma of f into g of f is like this because sine of f for f greater than 0 it is 1 f less than 0 it is minus 1 so g, the the combined this this term becomes like this and by adding these two terms these two gets added and these two get cancels these, these two get cancelled so the resulting spectrum is like this. So this is just like this 
this band folding to here folding through the y axis we can get this suppose we are folding this see this side to this here if you fold fold it on the right right side it becomes like this it is just like folding this so the pre envelope is just like folding to the folding the waveform frequency spectrum to the right that is it is a pre envelope of for positive frequencies g plus of equal to 2 g of f and for positive frequencies doubles the origin signal and for g of and for f is equal to zero and for f plus as that is for negative frequencies it come it is not completely zero and similarly for negative frequency we can find g minus of t equal to g of t minus j into g cap of t and where g, g cap of t is the hilbert tra transform as we told you earlier in frequency domain becomes g of f minus minus into minus j into minus j into sigma of f into g of f, that is g of f minus sigma of f into g of f this j into j it is minus 1 and plus that in plus becomes minus n so it is this is the equation that is this is a pre envelope for negative frequencies for f greater than 0 that is for positive frequency it is 0 and for negative frequencies it is it is a double of the origin signal so as is shown here it is the, this is the origin signal g of f with band limited uh, w into w n minus w and this is this is the second term in the equation that is sigma of f into g of f and these these get cancelled this minus these two get cancelled and these two gets added and two it is it doubles the negative doubles for negative frequencies that is shown here this like this now let's see the complex envelope as a theorem any physical band pass a can be represented as like this s of t equal to real part of s hash t into e raised to j 2 pi f c t where is a band pass a our am wave can be called as a band pass wave because it it's it, it, it it's a band limited signal not starting from zero start, the signal started from zero hertz can be called as low pass signal this is a band limited signal for example 100 to 110 megahertz like that so here s of t, s hash of t is called the complex envelope of band pass signal that is a low pass signal that has to is a low pass signal and it's a complex and because it is a complex envelope it can be written in real and imaginary part that is x of t and y of t and from equation 18 and 18 and 19 we have s of t equal to real part of x of t plus j into y of t into e raised to j 2 pi of c t so the equation becomes like this x of t plus j into y of t into e raised to j 2 pi of c t can be expanded uh, like this cos 2 pi of c t plus j into sin 2 pi of c t and by cross multiply we get like this in the equation like this and taking the real part of the, this equation we get s of t equal to x of t into cos 2 pi of c t minus y of t into sin 2 pi of c t where this x of t and y of t are low pass signals and then now let x si of t equal to x of t and sq of t be equal to y of t so we get the final equation like this for it is a this is the canonical or standard form of band pass signal s of t s of t is a more data signal or band pass signal is equal to si of t into cos 2 pi of ct minus sq of t into sin 2 pi of ct and this is the in phase this is called the in phase component and this is called the quadrature component of the modulated wave of the modulated wave and and they are low pass signal just it is derived from message signal message signal is a, we have a it is a low pass signal and this si of t and sq of t is derived from message of message signal m of t so this those two are also low pass signals so depending on how these components of s of t that is according to the type of in phase component and quantity component we can have two four types of am wave four type of linear four type of modulation and this this according to s of t and uh, sq of t we can also define any other modulation scheme also but now let us focus on am so first is standard am the standard am means it is the full 
version of the M2 modulation that is it, it will have the carrier wave and the and the baseband signal both in in both band that is it, it will have an upper side band and the lower side band and the double D, double side band suppressed carrier and terminal that's a DSP SC modulation here the carrier wave is suppressed and we will have only the two side band that's a lower side band and upper side band only and here single side band we do, and here we will not have the carrier and we will we'll, we'll be transmitting only the only one only one portion of the side band that is only suppose uh, for example it can be only lower side lower one one lower side band or upper side band and accordingly it will be called lsp am and usb a and vestigial side band means it is a filter uh, it is according to filter technique where the modified version of one side band is transmitted with the with the some part of other side band is also transmitted. We will we'll be focusing on that. We'll, when we go through, we'll be, you will be understanding. So, type of model. For DSPSC, the interface common is M of E, cortical content is 0. And in SSB, one is half M of T and one other one is half M cap of T, where M cap, cap of T is a Hilbert transform. And lower side band is half M of E and minus half M cap of T. And vestige that is VSP, it is half M of T and half M cap of T. That is, this M of T is output of filter of frequency response HT of F due to M of T. We'll be seeing that more elaborately. So, standard aim for standard aim, the in phase command is SA of T is 1 plus M of T and counter the command is SK of T is equal to 0. So, the equation 21 begins that's a, that S of T becomes like this that is on m of t into 0 and this can be analyzed like this cos 2 pi of ct e raised to j plus e raised to j 2 plus j plus i can assign like this and s of f will get like this and this is uh, from direct from that equation multiplication of Two time domain is a convolution in the frequency domain. That's why we got m of f minus fc and f plus fc here. And here we have the impulse function that is a Fourier transform of this function. That is del f minus fc and del f plus fc. That is a shifted version. So we'll have you get like this is a frequency domain representation of standard a. Here we have transmission bandwidth 2w is a frequent the carrier channel carrying frequency is here 1 by 2 half of the baseband and here we have uh, 2w bandwidth and this is the signal the representation like this and now we will see DSPSC in phase command is SI of t uh, SI of t is an m of t and quarter command is 0 so substituting in that we will get like this of m of t like this you can expand like this expand this one like this half into we'll get the convolution power again according to the multiplication of two in the time domain is a conversion the frequency domain and we'll get like this m of f minus fc m of f plus fc so here what you see the carrier is missing here so so we we have a um, efficiency efficient in the power 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 transmission the the carrier is not transmitted so we can uh, you can save that power and again here bandwidth is 2w so that is a beast the message the, the message is only in the w that is a, uh, 0 to w only so that this this portion is unwanted also or the, otherwise this portion is unwanted so that will be able to see in the, in the next slides. So this is a DSPSC wave when the carrier is suppressed. That's why it is called suppressed carrier. Now ESPM in phase component is SAFT that's half M of T. Quarter component is half M cap of T.
So it is here quadrat this uh, equation. The equation become like this m cap of t into sine p of t t. So expanding this cos term like this, we can get like this. Expand the sine term, we'll get according to the Euler Euler Euler's formula, we'll get 1 by 2j instead of 1 by 2. So we'll get like this. So m cap of t into e raised to j 2 pi of ct so that is like this 1 by 2 we take outside that becomes 1 by 4 and m of f minus fc so m cap of f minus fc like this okay so this we will substitute here earlier we have sigma sigma of f into m, m cap of f is equal to sigma of f into g of f that is like this minus a sigma of f into uh, g of f that is so m cap of f, f is minus a sigma of f minus fc into m of f minus fc so expanding this one in some mathematical some algebraic techniques we can apply here so it becomes like this so final equation is like this 1 by 4 into m, m of f minus fc plus m, m of f plus fc sine of f minus fc into m of f minus so the so the singing position frequency remains can be understood as understood as follows the signal of fc we have so greater than fc it is one less than fc it is minus one at fc it is zero so we can draw some picture in the frequency domain so it is like this the first picture this is the baseband signal m of f m of f minus fc so into the signal function we can draw it like this this is not a frequency, single frequency it's two different two different two different uh, term so one one into two results in three so multiplying those two one and two we'll get like this and then adding one and three we'll get like this you can draw here you can if you if you can draw in the in the notebook we can can derive it like this so here we are saying the power power of the carrier wave the here carrier wave is not there and this is frequency number representation of usb and upper side band yeah upper side band so again this freak this this term can be served saved here so we are transmitting only one of the only one of the bands of the am wave so you can save power and bandwidth. So LSP is from LSP AM, that is lower side band AM. Here we are transmitting only the lower side band. So in the in phase component is half M of T, quarter account is minus half M cap, M cap of T. And doing the same manipulation as the same before, as same as USB AM, we'll get like this. And this one by 2J is a expansion of sine 2 pi of ct and cap of t and cap of t is minus a sigma of f into m of f and because it is shifted and this f, f this m of fc we have sigma f, f, f minus fc and m of f minus fc and then expanding this term this term some minus and terms are there you have to be careful so if we expand this one we will get like this we we'll get like this and then crossing the frequency domain can be understood as follows so these are m of f and this is the m of f minus fc and this is two signal function and multiplying it we we'll get like this and then one plus three the m of f and m of f minus fc and this added together we we'll get lower side band only because in powerpoint i can't i cannot uh, go back to earliest slides you can understand that so just write down these pictures and then try to derive in some notebook you will get this uh, you can uh, rewind this video and see how it works so this is a frequency representation of the a of it is lsp uh, of lsp am that is lower sand band here this band only is transmitted again the the bandwidth and uh, the power is saved and it's more efficient than other am and now let us see standard am 
that is singleton modulation singleton modulation means in this the message signal we are not taking as a uh, particular band we are taking as a single frequency that is suppose a m a m of t here we are saying it as a m cos 2 pi f, f of t that's a a sine wave signal and the earlier part it was a some it, the message signal was some band limited signal now it is only single frequency signal so from equation 3 for singleton modulation we will get ac into 1 plus, 1 plus k m of t this is m of t m of t becomes a m into cos 2 pi f m t into cos 2 pi f c t so here we define modulation index as an absolute ma maximum value of k m of t that is k a m so this term is called the m that is a modulation index continued so s of t is equal to ac into 1 plus m into cos 2 pi f m into cos 2 pi c t so in the picture we can see this is a amplitude mode like am wave this is an fc frequency in fc and this is a frequency fm so this is the am max this is a maximum amplitude of the amplitude uh, am wave and this is a minimum amplitude of the am, uh, am wave and this is cos 2 pi fct and this is cos 2 2 pi fmt So let's find out the frequency representation. So S of t can be written like this: a c into cos 2 pi f c t into m into plus m into cos 2 pi f m t into cos 2 pi f c t. Uh, if I expand that equation, so we have cos a into cos b, half of cos a minus b plus cos a minus a plus b. So you can substitute here that one. So you'll get f, f c minus f m f c plus f m. And then by Euler's formula, if we expand each cos terms, we'll get like this. So finally, S of f in frequency domain we have, that is, we, we already know e raised to j 2 pi fc t is nothing but del of f minus fc. So we'll get del f, 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 f minus fc here, and this term f plus fc, and for this term it will be f, f minus fc minus fm, and this is f plus fc minus fm. And this is f my f minus f c plus f m, and this is f plus f c plus f m. So next we will look at the frequency frequency domain representation in the next slide. So this is the frequency domain representation of standard AM and baseband signal. This is the baseband signal M of f, and now here this time we are taking a single tone frequency. A single sine wave that is of frequency fm and amplitude am and in the representation of because of native frequency it becomes am by 2 am by 2 split and after modulation this get translates so this whole spectrum here this whole signal get translates to here so that is becomes fc plus fm and fc minus fm and each component is of amplitude mac by 4 as we see in the equation and so this is the upper side band, this is called the upper side band, this is a lower side band, and this is a carrier signal, this is a lower side band, upper side band, and, and, and the, this, this is symmetric to each other uh, along the y-axis. And from time domain, you can see AC equal to A max plus A minimum by 2, and M of AC is equal to A max plus A min by 2, that we can derive it from the picture earlier the figure and modulation as we can define it like a max minus a min by a max plus a min so now we'll see the power of signal from power relations from Parseval's theorem we have power of a signal defined as pt is equal to integral minus infinity to infinity s of f square df so what what does that mean is is we are taking the square of each component suppose for a monotone we will get some impulses over the frequency axis so we are taking the square of each impulse and then taking the sum of all over the frequency so it will become summation or minus infinity to infinity of s of f square so from the figure that frequency domain representation of standard am for monotone modulation we have two two carrier carrier wave we have two impulses that is each each are ac by 2 
So we will take the square of that. So it will become AC square by 4 into 2. Then we have MAC by 4. So suppose and be squaring that, it will get M, M square, AC square by 16. So there are four such like that, four such impulses. So we will uh, add it over all, all together. So it will become 4 into M square, AC square by 16. So the total power is AC square by 2 plus M square, AC square by 4. So carrier power is PC equal to AC square by 2. And total power is PT is equal to PC plus PLSP plus DUSP. That is SC square 2 plus. This is this term. USP and LSP and USP term is this one. And if we then expand like this, we will get PC into 1 plus M square by 2. This is the final equation of the total power. PC equal to, well, PT is equal to PC into 1 plus M square by 2. So suppose we have multi-ton modulation. That is carrier frequency same. AC equals to capacity and here again we have different different, different single different sine wave at different frequencies so that's m of t fm1 fm2 fm3 like this and let the corresponding modulation x be of the each each uh, baseband signal be m, m1 m2 m3 so we will get like this you can expand it according to the earlier equation like this you can again expand this Again, we can expand it is the P into PC into 1 plus M1 square M2 square M, M3 square by 2. So and so MT becomes uh, the total modulation index become root over M1 square plus M2 square plus M3 square so and so. This is a one important relation. So now let us say demodulation of standard AM or this called as an envelope detector. This is AM wave. This is the source substance, this is a detector diode and a single frequency diode which, a diode, uh, which works at high, high frequency and this is a capacitor and this is a resistor at the output, low, low distance maybe. So now we will see how to detect a standard AM is a simple circuit called envelope detector or a, otherwise it's also known as a peak detector. So here, so here this is a, this is a AM wave uh, and G is the output of the envelope detector. So at, at this point, uh, the, at, the, at, the, at the rising point, the capacitor gets charged, it is get full, fully charged and then when the AM wave goes down, the, because the, the RC is very much greater than the message frequency, it, this, the, the, the rate of discharge of the capacitor will be very small comparing to the frequency of the carrier wave. So it will be just slowly discharging out to the next next point and again it charges and again it get small uh, uh, slowly discharge. So it will go like this. It will go the it will the it will take the envelope envelope of the AM wave that is the, the envelope of AM wave is the message signal. So we will get the message signal at the output load. So condition is RC is, should be very much greater than time period of the carrier wave. Also it should be greater than time period of the message wave. So now let us see the double signed subscribed carrier wave modulation. So here it is it's a product modulator where the input signal is M of T. That's a baseband signal. And the carrier wave, carrier wave is AC cos 2 pi FCT. And we will be multiplying both to get the DSP SC modulator wave. As we have seen earlier, the in phase component is M of T. And multiplied with the cos 2 pi FCT, AC, AC cos 2 pi FCT, we will get the modulator wave. So in the frequency, there is a baseband signal. In the frequency, uh, is a frequency domain. It's a DSP SC AM wave. So now we will see the demodulation of DSP SC wave. For standard AM, we have seen uh, the, uh, the, uh, the demodulation done using an envelope detector, which is a diode and a capacitor. Here we employ another technique called coherent detection. 
where the input m v v is this one s of t and we have a local oscillator here which should be in phase and same frequency as the uh, transmitter carrier wave and we will we'll be multiplying with the input am wave that is the channel output and then the low pass filter and get the v, v of t that is the message signal. So while multiplying these two quantities that is the input am wave and the local oscillator wave we will have we'll get four things that is the four things first two things one is the one is it will be shifting so there will be f, f minus fc and f plus fc that is for f plus fc it becomes 2 fc and f minus fc becomes 0 that is the base band base so we will have two quantities here one is the base band signal here another message signal at the double of the carrier frequency that is according to Fourier transform so and then we will we'll be passing this signal this signal to a low pass filter and get the filtered portion of the baseband that is a baseband signal so that will we'll get ac half ac ac hash m of 0 cos phi and cos phi is the phase difference of the uh, phase difference between the local oscillator and the transmitted carrier wave so dsvspm is like this and from the block time v of t we'll get this one and we have see cos a cos a into cos b we'll have cos a minus b and cos a plus b and this is the 2 fc term this is the 2 fc term and this is the low pass filter term this one and after low pass filtering we have this one half ac ac hash cos phi mod so here you can see the amplitude of the output wave depends upon cos phi see so if suppose if the phase difference is zero we will get a maximum amplitude and the cos phi is the phase difference is at 90 we will get zero and this zero is the zero modulus occurs modulus signal which occurs at 5 pi by 2 represents the quadrature null effect of the cohen rate so the amplitude changes so so we this, this cannot be practically implemented because the, the amplitude changes according to the phi so a difference in phase difference so the demodulus in v of t is proportional to m, m of t where the phase error is a constant amplitude is maximum when theta phi is equal to 0 minimum 0 and when it is pi by 2 so therefore provision should be made in system to maintain the local oscillator in the receiver in perfect synchronism in both frequency and phase and frequency it is simple we can tune according to frequency but the phase difference you should have some negative feedback in order to achieve it so in that and this is a cost receiver which does the phase discrimination so here there are i channel and q channel I channel which derives the in-phase channel and Q channel which derives the cottage channel. So, so this is the same case as, as the coherent detection and here there is a phase discrimination. So here if the phase is zero, phase is zero, this only this quantity remains and this negative feedback works like to nullify the quadrature channel. So suppose the phi is some greater than uh, some uh, greater than zero quantity so there will be some sine phi here so suppose the this volt uh, oscillator the local oscillator uh, frequency uh, local oscillator carrier wave is little bit leading means and here there will get it it makes the voltage converter little bit lag the output will be lagging and output will be such that it should lag and it lags lags and finally comes to phase equal to zero suppose if the water under house it is lagging the tran uh, transmitter carrier wave and this phase discriminant makes it leading and then finally it, it makes leading 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 and then finally makes the phase equal to zero and this 
this time only prevails here. That's the working of COSAT cost as receiver. So just a feedback system, you can just understand in a proper in a proper manner. And now SS, SSB A modulation, only the upper or lower sideband is transmitted. And this SSP AM applies for applies for, uh, for baseband signal which have no zero hertz zero frequency and which have an energy gap in between zero zero hertz and some fixed frequency hertz some fi fi fixed frequency. So this is MFT message signal product modulator just multiplies this and and yeah, and that DSPSC is generated and here it goes to a bandpass filter where the band um, bandwidth is FM and then the SSP out and for SSP center the base channel should have an energy gap centered at origin And this requirement is naturally satisfied by voice signals whose energy gap is about 600 hertz wide. So suppose this is 300 hertz, the filter should have a 600 hertz transition band. A point you noted for design of BPF, the desired sideband lies inside the passband. See here, the filter, the sideband lies inside the passband, the unwanted sideband lies inside the stop band that is here the transition band for the filter is 2 fa that is this this fa and this fa it is 2 fa can be relayed as crystal resonance 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 that is crystal filters will be used here so the spectrum of xsp signal is shown below for example usb a the both the both band is transmitted and the filter is used to filter out this the the way uh, the frequency he frequencies here that is f minus f a the frequencies are filtered out and we get only the usb am wave so demodulation is like this ssp in product modular coherent local, local oscillator and again we will have a low pass filter which will be filtering the audio frequency out and get the audio frequency so in this method also there are some advantages and disadvantages. So assume that local host rate in the receiver is a perfect sync with the carrier in the transmitter. So it is usually met in two ways. A lower low power pilot carrier in transmitter in addition to the selected band. And see this pilot carrier is according to make uh, making this as a reference, local carrier oscillator is generated in that receiver end according to this pilot carrier. A highly stable oscillator on the same frequency as the carrier frequency is used in the receiver. That is in the, like, like in the cost as receiver also, the carrier frequency is used in the receiver. So in this case, there will be some phase error in the local oscillator route with respect to carrier wave. So this causes a phase distortion in the demodulus signal where each frequency component of message signal goes a constant phase shift phi. So that is, According to the coherent detection, there will be a constant phase shift phi. This is tolerant in voice signals, that is in the speech signals, this, that is tolerant because we cannot understand the phase distortion in the speech. We, the, the, our ear cannot recognize the phase distortion. And the presence of phase is shown give rise to some Donald Duck voice effect. It's called Donald Duck voice. Some voice effect is shown in the demodulated wave. And next is the VSP modulation. So two systems are two systems are in practice. One is one sideband is fully transmitted along the vestige of other. And then second type, a vestige of sideband and the corresponding modified version of the other sideband is transmitted. In this case, no correction is required at the receiver end. So this is the VSP modulation. Again, we are make, uh, deriving a DSPSC modulated wave. And then it is passed through a bandpass signal, bandpass filter of H of F. And then we are getting the VSP modulated wave. So the bandpass filter design like this. 
this is the carrier frequency so here a modified version of the one sideband is transferred that is this one and then the vestige of the other that is this this side this vestige of the lower sideband is transferred that is this filter does like that so this is the response of the filter the phase response is linear transmission bandwidth becomes this is fm up to here it is fm fm plus fe so time domain equation is like this the vsp is described in time domain is s of t is equal to half ac m of t cos 2 pi of ct plus or minus half ac m cap m hash t cos 2 pi of ct where positive sign when vestige of the usb is transmitted negative sign when vestige of lsp is transmitted so earlier we have so that is minus when vestige of lsp is transmitted so m m m cache of m hash of t is obtained by passing m of t through a filter as you have defined by this definition see that is see this is the same as the same uh, as a filter uh, response of filter shown earlier because this this act as a transmit of modified version of one band and vestige of the other so this application this application of vsp is used in television signals because television signals is not like voice signals because voice signals we have some bandwidth uh, some band without any signal with respect to zero uh, zero hertz that is it has some energy gap as earlier told an fa some energy gap is there in tv signals we don't get like like that the dc frequency the dc that's a dc signal the zero hertz signals act as a brightness information so if we don't transmit the the dc that the dc part the zero hertz part then the picture will be black so that is a analog uh, analog tv signal lies like that so we have to transmit the signal from directly from zero hertz to 5 megahertz that is 5 megahertz act as a 5 megahertz act, that is a bandwidth of the television signal 5 megahertz or in that is a uh, that's a format in the PAL TV transmission Asia and all. In the TV signal in North America, total bandwidth is 6 megahertz. The video bandwidth becomes 4.5 megahertz. And a guard band of 0.25 megahertz. And also a carrier and the audio carrier signal is also transmitted. Some 0.25 megahertz also is there. The video signal as you say, large bandwidth and signal for low frequency content, as I told you. The low frequency connection is the brightness information. The circuitry used for demodulation in the receiver should be simple and therefore inexpensive. This suggests the use of envelope detection which requires picture carrier. So, so it applies an envelope detection for the picture, uh, picture information. So we employ here a VSP modulation. So this is the spectrum of the TV signal. See here. See. This is a picture carrier as some part of the the vestige of the lower sideband is transmitted and the full sideband is transmitted here and the VSP filter the receiver and filters it like this because here it is totally transmitted so this adding on this will come back like the square like the rectangular filter and so the both this signal with added to here it will become so up to here so total signal we can get like this so this, this is a vsp filter so we use an envelope detector at the receiver and we modify the transmitter end by adding the carrier with this carrier at scale factor k so equation 33 becomes s of t ac into 1 plus half k m of t cos to be we will get like this minus half k ac m hash t cos 2 pi c t the output of m variable is absolute value so we have square the both and take the root so we will get like this this is the, this is the when we substitute we will if you take the absolute value we will get like this ac into root over 1 plus half k m t like this and again expanding we will get like this when taking out the 1 plus half k m of t portion outside 
will get like this. This is the final equation. So equation 35 indicates that distortion is contained by m, m hash of t, which is responsible for the quadrature component. So we don't want the quadrature component. So this can be reduced by reducing the percentage modulation to reduce the amplitude sensitivity k. And also another technique can also be used in increasing the width of the vestigial sideband to reduce m hash of t. So uh, using these two methods, we can reduce the quadrature component and get the in-phase component only. That will be the pure TV signal. So next is so without mentioning this, it will be incomplete. So I'll be saying super heterodyne receiver. So irrespective of modulation of modulation, the receiver has other two functions: carrier frequency tuning. So a receiver should have a tuning filter or a filter which tunes to the carrier frequency, then filtering and it filtering it and amplification amplifying it. So in super heterodyne, what um, we'll have a innovative technique because uh, like and there, that's the intermediate frequency. All the receiving signals, all the tuned signal will be translated to this intermediate frequency. And from this intermediate frequency, we can have a circuit to demodulate the incoming signal, incoming AM signal, AM or FM signal. Why we are making intermediate frequency? We cannot demodulate the RF frequency at, at that at that at that time itself because uh, we should have a very large bandwidth, suppose 1000 megahertz bandwidth, we have to demodulate, we, that is practically impossible. Suppose we are making everything, we are, we are uh, translating everything, every, every incoming R frequency to a intermediate frequency means it is easy to demodulate at that intermediate frequency. That's why we are making the intermediate frequency. See here, you can say here. RF carrier range is 0.535 to 1.605 megahertz in FM radio 88 to 108 megahertz and and here in AM radio we are using 455 kilohertz as the AM radio IF section and here the bandwidth is 10 megahertz 10 kilohertz only in FM radio it is 200 kilohertz the bandwidth differs but we can have a medium frequency a medium frequency in which we can make a inexpensive demodulating circuit to demodulate the incoming signal. That is the technique used here. So here, so here when we tune and then change the incoming to intermediate frequency becomes some one will be f, f of L0 minus FR. L0 is the local oscillator frequency, RF is the RF frequency. We will have FO, FLO plus RF and FLO minus R. This FLO minus RF will be taken as intermediate frequency and other one will be filtered out. And the IF section consists of one or more shades of tuned amplification. There will be some uh, tuned amplification. And after the IF section, the signal is demodulated using a envelope detector and then it is amplified and fed through a loudspeaker. The image frequency is filtered out. So image frequency I will be uh, telling in the next slide. The image frequency will be filtered out in the RO section. So this is a complete block diagram of a super heterodyne receiver. So next is image frequency. Let us see what is image frequency. So what will be the mixer output? The mixer output will be this is Fs equal to FLO plus or minus FR. That is a mixer. There will be a uh, sum of local oscillator and RO, RO frequency the desired station. So LO plus RF and LO minus RF. And LO plus RF will be a very high frequency. So that will be automatically filtered out in the RF section. And then we will have only the difference between the local oscillator and the uh, radio frequency. That is a desired station. So for example, suppose the uh, frequency of the local oscillator is 1500 kilohertz. And the intermediate frequency which we required is 60 kilohertz. So, uh, so directly we can say that there will be a desired station whose frequency is 1560. And difference between these RF1 and LO is 60 kilohertz. So that will be the desired station. But for, uh, for for seeing the image frequency, there will be a another RF2, another station whose difference between this 
that station and localized frequency will be ima frequency uh, sorry i uh, intermittent frequency so so let us see that rf2 is 1440 kilohertz so so difference between those two will be again 60 kilohertz so this is also come after the uh, mixer at the mixer output so we will be filtering before the mixer output the ima frequency and then we will have only the desired station so let's see the equation for ima frequency this is given as fim equal to fr plus or minus 2 fif where fr is the desired station and fif is a intermediate frequency so according how we will we select the desired station suppose it is at the right hand side of the local oscillator we, the ima, the ima frequency will be fr of minus f2 fif or suppose we are taking at the left hand side as the uh this station and it will be fr of plus 2 2 into fif so according uh, in this according to this picture you can see how it, the ima frequency is related to intermittent frequency and radio frequency you can see at the picture here so let us see how the signal processing happens at the antenna there will be two stations one this is s1 is a desired station and s2 is a undesired station but uh, using a rf filter will be filtering out the desired station and the mixer input get only the desired station and that will be at the at the mixer output we will be getting uh, fr of minus flo that is the intermediate frequency here and again we using a intermediate frequency filter the the signal is filtered out and we will get the if filter output as the the desired station at the intermediate frequency that is as for example for 455 kilohertz for am so that's it uh, see you in the next lecture so please like and share the video subscribe the channel thank you if you have any queries you can mail me to chans484@gmail.com or put at the comment section of the video